and welcome back to another episode of Bros and Boxers. I'm once again joined by the wonderful Casey. How's it going today, guys? And gals. And gals. Uh, and we are also joined today by my brothers. We have here Alex. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And we have here CJ. Hey, guys. I love how uh, Casey and Alex both said, how's it going? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's great to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that people out there are like, it's going well. Like, as you say that, they just whisper it out loud. Speak it How's to the going? ether. Bef- yeah. Before we get started today, <laughs> I do want to just give a quick update to last week that our dear Casey is doing much better. He tested negative for the plague today. So, and, the plague, and he's feeling, the modern 2020 plague. <laughs> and he's feeling well, so just wanted to pop that out. Uh, but we won't dwell on it. We won't give too much credence to pop that. Pop it out like a baby. Disease. Pop it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Head first. So we're going to dive right in. Our first topic today, uh, okay. we got to address <laughs> the the wild events yesterday. We, didn't, we weren't really expecting to talk too much about this, um, but then, you know, things took a turn yesterday. CJ, why don't you catch us up on a little bit about what happened yesterday? I think we should start from the beginning. So Georgia had the elections and the Democrats won both the seats, which... Honestly, in my opinion, it was a great effort um, from Stacey Abrams with her. Now, what Fair seats Fight are you talking about, though? What's that? Oh, we're talking, talking about, about the Senate, the Senate okay. seats. Okay. Um, okay. Warnock Just had clarify. defeated uh, Purdue, and uh, Ossoff had defeated uh, the fourth, whatever her name is. The one I think you have it. Sold her... I think you have oh, it. Oh, I have it backwards, don't I? Yeah. yeah. In any case, the, maybe uh, CJ Democrats... won't catch us up. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say these guys are all sounding like a chicken to me. So uh, Purdue is uh, Purdue beat Tyson. Uh, yeah, Tyson <laughs> Tyson's in the race there. And can you imagine if we voted on that stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who's gonna sell us chicken from here on out? Well, the yeah, people br- have brings chosen it back to Purdue. Purdue brings it back to the old uh, what was it South Park episode right where it was a turd sandwich and a giant. Feminine hygiene problem. No, what is it in, um, in Futurama where it's um, it's like John Jackson and Jack Johnson or something, and they're the exact same person. <laughs> yeah. They're like clones of each other. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are clones of each other. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we digress. Back, CJ. back to the topic. Um, so Georgia, the Senate the majority is now Democratic, which means that all three branches of government are uh, under Democratic control. And what happened the day after, which was yesterday is that the House and the Senate were going to count and certify the votes. Now, we expected uh, a number of Republicans to object to some of the states, um, basically tried to overthrow the election and the will of the people. It was really frowned upon, and the 11 who were going to do that, honestly, in our in my personal opinion, is almost near treasonous. But that morning... Our president had decided to have a rally and told his people that he was going to march with them to the Capitol and they were going to make themselves heard because in order to save this country, you have to show strength. Um, This, of course, incited riots and domestic terrorism from his supporters. Um, They had stormed the Capitol. you, You could say that they had breached through the police lines, but there's been a number of reports which showed them basically being welcomed, um, that there's a video of the police just pushing the gates aside for them to walk on by. Um, but there were individual police officers that um, did do their duty. Um, and then from what I've been told recently, one of them had uh, lost their life as a result. Definitely a lot of need for investigation into why there was hardly any police force compared to when you saw the Black Lives Matter in, uh, in the summer. Um, but in any case, the entire Senate and Congress were now at risk. They, well, I'll definitely... say this. I'll say this to, to interject. There are Republicans who, I would say that the majority of the Republicans in the Senate, they they weren't on board with this. I mean, even McConnell, I was surprised to see uh, his speech yesterday, basically saying, you know, we won't be intimidated by, by these thugs. And even before that, he had given a speech saying that these objections were ridiculous, basically. Um, and then there was, there, you know, there's still... The, the main question, which CJ did pose, is why was it so understaffed? Uh, because part of the reason, it, yeah, there, are definitely, there are definitely police officers who you see taking selfies and such, and those officers should be admonished and, and uh, 
there, there needs to be something done. But there's also the, the thing where you saw one officer taking on a whole crowd. So what was he supposed to do? You know what I mean? He had to, he had to retreat. Are you talking about the one in the hallway? Uh, the one on the steps. Yeah. 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 So it that's, was, that's... I mean, you see stuff like that and it's like, eh. so there was like nobody there. But I, I do want to say that there's, it's undeniable that it was largely Trump supporters. And I think that this is where you see a real divide. And I've said it before uh, recently, but I think that, you know, the, the issue isn't necessarily Republicans versus Democrats, because we've had Republicans versus Democrats for a while, and we don't agree, but we get, we get it done. But it seems to be this, this faction of Republicans, these um, Trump supporters are like just so sucked in that they're, they don't even really care about conservatism. I mean, I wouldn't say they're conservatives. They just follow whatever Trump wants to do. I mean, a lot of conservatives opposed the $2,000 stimulus, which kind of falls in line with right. what a conservative would usually uh, oppose. But the Trump supporters did not. They were all for it because Trump was for it. So I don't really think they're truly Republicans. I think they just aligned with Republicans because Trump ran as a Republican because he thought he could get the votes. And this does this places the Republican Party in a very interesting place because a lot of these Trump supporters do um, have Republican Party selected as their party. So you, I really do think we're going to see, especially in the next two years, um, an evolution to the Republican Party, um, maybe even a divide between them and possibly a new party as a result because you do have these Republicans that are out there that don't they don't ride the Trump train, you know they do want that conservatism which you know i respect and that's it's a shame because when you look at the the house and you see the um over 140 um congressmen and women most of our states congressmen and women voted to try to object to legitimate votes it's it's disheartening to think that that's who's representing that party exactly that's that's it's it's just very strange because you saw the the true conservatives yesterday saying, you know, what are we doing, basically? I mean, even Lindsey Graham, sli- slime ball that he is, he still said, you know, this is, and, he, I'm not going to object. This is the way it is. And and, and, and in this moment, oh, Michael, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to give you a heads up. Um, this is my one, but fuck Mitch McConnell. Um <laughs> <laughs> and, and Lindsey Graham too, because honestly, I do appreciate that the fact that they decided that okay, yeah, it's gone too far, but they have enabled this to happen. You know, they're they're basically backstepping in eleventh hour because they know that, you know, it's their, their time them. is done. Yeah, they're you trying know, they're, to save their own careers at this point. Oh yeah, and and, and it, but I mean, they if they really had cared, they really wanted to have prevented this. They would have they would have done something sooner. Like Mitt Romney is a great example. He's right. He is a Republican that saw the writing on the wall. And instead of being like, you know, and we even have quotes from Lindsey Graham who said that if we nominate Trump, he would destroy our party and we will deserve it. He's not, he didn't, he said that. And then instead of like really standing by them, he just kind of like gave into the whole Trumpism. Whereas you have Mitt Romney who saw what was happening. And at first he said, okay, you know, he, he was elected our president. I'm going to do what I can to help guide him, support him, um, give him direction. And very quickly, it became evident that, you know, that wasn't going to be the case. And Mitt eventually started to break through the party lines. And as a result, they started calling him a traitor. But I really respect him for that. And that, to me, is a real Republican leader in that party. And I hope that those are the kind of leaders that we'll see stay within that party and develop it into a better party. But the real, another, I mean, it plays to the other issue that we have a two party system. But I think to, to bring it back a little bit, talking about yesterday's events, I think the, the real takeaway was as terrible as it was, it kind of like united everybody in a way, like, uh, you know, like Republic like Republicans and Democrats and uh, libertarians and independents. Like we all were kind of on the same page at that, in that moment. Like right now, we've kind of hit a reset button in a way with a lot of people where we're like, okay, it's it's all of us, regardless of party versus these extremists. You know, like we, we all agree that this went a step too far, basically. Um, and so I, I kind of liked that in a sense. I'm not saying I'm that, glad it happened, but it was just nice. That to was see admirable. I mean, you, you did see Congress come back and they're like, you know what, we're going to finish this. You know, even though it happened today, we're going to come back, we're going to finish it. We're not going to be, you know, 
shocked and appalled, but you know, they were shocked and appalled. We're not going really to let this hinder what is the sacred duty that they were supposed to do. So do you want to hear this with an ad break? Just give us an opener, just saying like, oh, we're going to cut to an ad, yada, yada, and then just we'll wait a few seconds and then be like, all right, and I appreciate you sticking around through the ad, like something like that. You gotta, you gotta say we're cutting to an ad, CJ. What? Oh, you gotta to introduce ad? the fact yeah, that we're cutting to an ad. I, CJ, you're doing I the, think, you're doing the build up. You're gonna be like, hold, hold on, hold on. I think we need to use the one that you just did and have that long pause in it, and then go to CJ's for the second one. But for this one, I think we should use your explanation of what he's doing. <laughs> All right, that was the end. Oh, we should definitely use that. Oh, man, that was, that was beautiful. <laughs> I'm just sitting there for so long. I'm like, wow, CJ's really thinking about this. He's, got, he's, he's, he's really, really nervous about this first appearance. I don't want to say the wrong thing. So what, what do you want me to say that we're going to cut their ad now? Uh, you already did a great job. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was to say, hey, we're going to cut to an ad now. And then we have ads already that, that we cut okay. into the, the show. I and thought I was supposed to do like, that. All right, thanks for sticking around. This, oh, I kind of feel like all this needs to be left in. Oh, now. this is definitely getting left in. This is, <laughs> we appreciate everyone listening to this. Uh, we appreciate listening to the ad, um, and we're going to try to make them just as funny every time now. Everybody's tuned out by now. They're like, oh, what was that long yeah, pause? Did God, my Spotify drop? Terrible. <laughs> uh, Marissa was talking to me, and she was basically saying, like, you know, what would you do in a in like a zombie apocalypse situation? And that's like something that I think everybody's thought about before. It's like, okay, here's, here's, my, here's my plan, like my, my go-to, what I would do. And one of the things I always think about, and I want to hear what you guys think too, but I always think about going to like a grocery store. And it would have to be a grocery store with a second level. But like if you were at a grocery store, you can like lock the doors. You've got a ton of supplies in there. Like to okay, me, it seems like an idea. But you're like you have the keys to the grocery store though. I mean, right. I'm assuming everybody abandoned it. Like you have access. Zombie apocalypse. Now, see, I work at a grocery store, so that would be an option for me. Like, I could, I could go to this grocery store, lock it up, have a nice food supply, letting the people I know and I care about. But the other, the other issue is that those grocery stores are really not secure. Yeah, not at all. I mean, oh, you mean yeah, like they would just bust through the? They'll just the bust through the glass, the glass window. But what about the hurricane shutters? I was gonna say there are some that have those gates that go over the the sliding glass doors. If there's yes. a will, there's a way. The back doors <laughs> are only locked by a simple lock that you can get a tool to, to open up if you really want to. True. I don't know. Well, what, what would you guys do then? Where would you go? I mean, I don't think... You, we, what, what kind of doomsday are we talking about here? Are we talking about zombie apocalypse? Are we zombie about, apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, let's start with, let's just start with zombie okay. apocalypse. Let's say okay. that you wake up... Let's say you wake up and... 28 days later. It's Yeah, it's full-blown. <laughs> COVID-19 has progressed to the dead. All the dead are now attacking. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not I am legend. You you were for some reason in a medically induced coma to have surgery. You wake up, the hospital is completely empty. You are in nothing but a nightgown. <laughs> no, I mean you, you can of course change the situation, but Okay, cuz I was to say like are we at a point in in this scenario where we'd lost communication because I mean I feel like one of the first things that we would do, um, especially us as brothers is the family's probably going to come together at some point. Um, because there's going to be strength in numbers, especially when you're considering the fact that it becomes like, you know, you know, doggy dog kind of world where, you know, you're out to protect your own and you could you know, give a crap less about your neighbor at that point. <laughs> it, I mean, that, 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 like when you, I, I mean, I, when I played Last of Us, like you got to that point and like with that game where like, you know, you really are seeing that within the world of like, you know, they are really just trying to survive in those small groups. I mean, I really feel like that would, for, for us, it would be about getting the family together getting those numbers up and then from there trying to establish like what Michael said, establish like a, a fort, like a, almost like a fort, like a, a place in which we can like lock down. Like in, you know, in the walking dead, you have, they have that jail, which is pretty yeah. like legit. The other thing you have to oh, spoilers. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sorry. It's if you haven't seen for, walking like, dead, it's, 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 like, it's, yeah. it's yeah, been it's out now. forever, I guess. Spoilers. Yeah, next next thing you know, he's gonna tell us who wins the Game of Thrones. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was Bran. So, I think that in in order to just kind of prepare yourself, you should definitely have some sort of like a bag or something that lets you prepare what you need to have. So, stuff pops off, 
if you need to go somewhere, you can. The bug out bag? The bug out bag. That's what you need to do. So, you, so it's, it's kind of like when you have a pregnant wife and you have to have the bag ready to go to the hospital? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Except this has like a change of clothes. It's got duplicate IDs. It really is a security nightmare because in this bug out bag, you're going to have like your spare ID, like a couple hundred in cash. You're going to have food, ammunition. It, I, I don't know how comfortable I am with Stem it. Cells. And now, Alex, you visited me when I lived in the mountains. I was honestly thinking mountains a minute ago. <laughs> Just get up there. You're all alone. You can probably find somewhere that you could start growing some food around there. Yeah, I mean, it's so re- it's so remote. You climb yeah. up a little bit, and like, I mean, you went on the hike. We went on a couple of hikes, I think. But I have you, to say, I think long like term, you need to find a place that has like an established fresh water supply. That's the beauty of the mountains. You can drink the yeah, water straight off the, the rivers, drink straight out of the, the creeks and stuff. Well, and the other thing is, like, a life straw or iodine tablets, chlorine bleach. Yeah. Even just a kettle. So, I feel like we're missing something here, though. Like, we've been talking about, like, the survivor elements. What do we do about the zombies? What kind of zombies do you think we're considering here? Like, are we talking about, like, you know, 28 days later, 28 days later is what they're actually going to, like, like run at you? Or are we talking, like, Walking Dead, where oh they're, like, a God. little bit slower? That is so terrifying. To, like if, if zombies can run, the, the 28, zombies. Day, 28 days later is the one that I, I fear the most. Because oh yeah, I am the, not the World War Z zombies, the World War Z yeah. zombies, they, or the yeah. I Am Legend, when they can just the like horde. run at you and like they climb over each other. I'm telling you, if those if that, if that were the zombies, I'd just deuce out. I'd be like, well, we had a good run. Do you guys remember Left for Dead? Like yeah. those yeah. kinds of zombies were terrifying. The jockey, like the, the best jockey. of the, uh, the, one the best of the, the, the Shaun of the Dead zombies. Those are the ones that you fight back. They're like all slow and <laughs> the Oscar Romero style zombies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the dummies basically. I think the way that Last of Us did it, since it's based on an actual fungus that like gets into ants and uh like takes over their brains to get them to like latch onto branches and then they have a, a spot that yep. they can feed and grow that's gonna stay there. Like I think that is like probably the most realistic take on a zombie where maybe this crazy fungus infects humans and then they just kind of slowly wander like looking for a food source basically do they still decompose in in last of us that's what, what? I, I wonder like do they decompose like do they uh do, are they eventually yeah, i mean not so like the last the last of us does a really great job because the problem with like fighting zombies is that i don't think it's feasible like you're going to get to a point where the military can push that back close combat compared to the fact that we have like the very effective high, like high long distance combat. Now the last of us works great because it's a spore and these fungus can basically release a cloud. So you can effectively infect humans with just a cloud of spores. And now you have these humans that are turning into fungus and they can't stop it because they didn't have a cure at the time. So that was the most realistic idea of a like zombie apocalypse to me because you know, you don't have it to where you're being infected just by biting. You're being infected by literally breathing it in. And yes, mm-hmm. we probably would get to a point where we realize, okay, we need to have gas masks when we encounter these. But, you know, if they, if they grow rapidly enough, you could still see, like, that being a plausible thing. And some of those zombies in there are, like, terrifying. They have, like, some of them called clickers, where you literally just hear, like, the, uh, like it's, I can't get a sound, but it's like, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a clicking sound that's terrifying. And when you're in the game, I've always thought well, that, I... um, like, if you could make it work, hmm. basically taking like a yacht, parking it just offshore a little I'm bit. A oh, the uh, little, the Logan little, technique. I'm on a boat. Yeah, like like a ding, a little dinghy <laughs> that you can row into into the coast if you need to. But then you can row out at night. You don't have to worry about gas that way. But you have a floating home basically that the zombies aren't going to be able to like they're i can assume they probably won't be swimming so you can have a little thing. remote you're assuming home. that but you could also have it to where like you have these like zombies that evolve that's the other like element that we don't know about like yeah for example if you had the left for dead zombies if you're in a dinghy and they had the tongue zombie they're just gonna pull you in. oh yeah yeah well you park the, smoking, the yacht right? like half a mile out or something like that yeah. No, and I, I know with World War Z, they did they did touch on that a little bit, where like the navy basically becomes like the hub of humanity for a little bit. 
Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they go out into like the uh, um, the massive. What are those called? Why am I drawing a blank right now? The aircraft, carrier. aircraft carriers. Yeah, yeah, they're like on the. Doesn't that happen on, in in Gears uh, as well too? Yeah, Wait, wasn't so, it Gears Four where you're on the think so. aircraft carrier when you first start? No, I never finished it. Play past I never three. Gears. I played through three, but I didn't play four. I like started it. And I, I I played through all three with uh, a friend after having played them before. We're like, oh, we're gonna play through all the new. We're gonna play through all of them and then play through four. And I think five was coming out shortly. And then we got to four and we're like, oh, I hate Gears so much now. <laughs> just like, gears down. Get burned out on it. It's just like it's weird because it's not a bad game. Like they're fun games, but like they don't have the same. Like I could play. I can play through all through all the Halos. Like I could schedule some time and get through all of them and have fun. But after like Gears Three, I was just like satisfied, and I was like, "All right, this is it." And Gears Four just didn't grab me. Oh, and one last thing: you have to get one of those cars that have like the elevated platform, so you can oh, like stand got, on top. Yeah, I, there's a name. Overlanders. For yeah, Overlanders. Yeah. Anyhow, so once again, I gotta plug. I gotta ask everybody: please send us your mail. You know, I'm getting desperate. It's been weeks now. Not not a drop of mail. Every time I see a little ad, you know little spam. I'm like, is this it? No, not a drop. So please send in your suggestions. Uh, Something you want us to talk about, criticisms over the the poor quality of the show, Uh, something recent that you can't believe we missed. If you want to be on the show, you know, we're open to pretty much anyone. So just just send us something. The boys at brosenboxers.com. Let me tell you again. The boys at brosenboxers.com. Send it in. All right, again, I want to thank you guys for listening. Remember to smash that enjoyment button, ring the metallic cone, and sign up for our thing that we're doing right here. Well, sign up for it. Subscribe. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Subscribe to the podcast because it really helps us out. So go out there, let your platform know that you're really enjoying it, and come back next week because uh, we got to finish this conversation, I think.